Okay, now to our history lesson. Bill Van Druten was born in San Francisco and raised as an atheist. He was a psychiatrist at California State Prison for the Mentally Ill and then for 31 years at the Duluth Clinic, which is now part of Essentia. He has been the flounder of Lake Superior Freethinker and has been at the helm of our organization for 22 years, surviving death threats and keeping up his sense of humor. Today he has returned to make Lake Superior Freethinkers great again. Please welcome <laughs> Bill Andrew. <laughs> The title is How and Why the Lake Superior Freethinkers. But to understand the Freethinkers and how it got started, you need to know how I got started. So let's start in the beginning. Well, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. <laughs> and God separated the waters from the dry land. But that's another story. I was born in San Francisco, November of uh, 1932 on my mother's birthday. I was a pretty scrawny kid, five pounds, six ounces. And here I am walking across the Golden Gate Bridge on 1937, it was opening day with my aunt. So I'm skinny then, I'm skinny now. Well, as I grew up, my family and playmates were my venue. My family itself, as was said, is, is void of religion. Not only did it not have a religion, they never told me about religion. They, I didn't know there was such a thing for quite a while, but I discovered that uh, some of my playmates on Idora Street in San Francisco were missing on Sunday morning. They came later in the afternoon, but that's about the first I learned about being religious. I learned early not to ask adults. One time on Idora Street, a man had come to our house with a basket of kittens that he thought we might like one or two of. And we were there on the porch, sunny day, my mom and I and this man. And he says, well, this, this kitten is a female. And this kitten is a female. This one is a male. And I looked at those kittens, and I couldn't tell any difference. <laughs> and so I asked the man, how, did you, how do you know? Well, he took one of those kittens, turned it upside down, and examined its genitalia. This just threw my mother into a panic, because <laughs> he was a prude, even though she'd been an RN. And she, but, uh, she hustled me out of there real fast. <laughs> and I learned, don't ask. <laughs> Then when you get to be about nine years old, you can become a Cub Scout. We were assembled uh, every uh, month or so uh, to go to church. So we go to churches, this one, and then another month or so we'd go to this one and this one. And I was amazed to discover that there are important ways to be saved and not to go to hell but rather to heaven, the good place. But in those various churches, the ways to get saved differed greatly. And I thought that was pretty puzzling because you know, it's an important matter. So I asked uh, the adults, I said, well, well, this doesn't, you know, what about this? Because he said this and these. And they say, you are too young to understand. So another lesson, don't ask. <laughs> then the next shock to me occurred uh, one Sunday afternoon when our playmate Eileen Farley returned from what I later found out was a Catholic church. And she told us, the group of playmates, that we were all going to hell, a very bad place. And she was going to a nice place and also, our parents were going to hell, too. Uh, well, I was pretty shocked about that, so I broke my rule, and I asked my father. <laughs> and he said to me, 
Well, Bill, some people believe that. Well, life goes on even more, and at about age 11 or 12, my father, he was a general practitioner in San Francisco, thought he would uh, have the family join Portalhurst Presbyterian Church, which was in his neighborhood. He thought that this would help his business. He would get more customers. And he quickly became an important man in this church, a deacon, and we boys, my two brothers and I went to Sunday school and we learned many strange things. For one thing, there was a room in that church called the Bancroft Room that was so sacred that no children could go in there and very few adults could go in. Now, I don't know what happened in there or what they did, but it was a mystery to me. Um, but there was an upside to this uh, going to Sunday school because my mother would give each of us a dime to contribute in the little envelopes, you know. And uh, somehow the dime found its way to an ice cream parlor on the way home. <laughs> they had wonderful ice cream cones and a dime in those days, geez. At 12 years old, you can be a Boy Scout, and that was a wonderful thing for me. Uh, we had a very active troop, it was the best in. California, I'm sure, but it had no religion uh, at that time. Well, the, the Boy Scouts later became uh, entangled with the Mormon Church and the Catholic Church. Uh, the Mormon Church opted out and uh, when uh, the Scouts r rather recently accepted gay Scouts and gay leaders, but they still do not accept atheist boys or leaders. In fact, they have ejected uh, a few who were openly atheist. And the Boy Scouts uh, have a statement that no member can grow to be the best kind of citizen without recognizing his obligation to God. And that's still uh, in force. It's an interesting thing here in uh, the uh, Free Thought Today is put out by the Freedom From Religion Foundation of which we are a chapter. And uh, here is a picture of uh, Beaver Scouts in Canada and they're holding up a merit badge with a, an A. Scarlet A, which is Richard Dawkins' uh, symbol for atheism. And um, this part says, God not needed to be the best kind of citizen. And it explains, oh, here, here's a Boy Scout looking at his merit badge, and he says, this one's for swimming, this one's for religious bigotry, this one's for homophobia, and this one's for woodcraft. Anyway. <laughs> Well, my father uh, learned that as a deacon in this church, he was expected to donate money, which was uh, greatly against his uh, plan. <laughs> he was also supposed to show up regularly on Sundays, even in the summer. And so he found out the church really didn't work for him, and we were free. I bring my family to Duluth, Minnesota, partly to get away from my parents and my wife's parents and, uh, and for a good job. I started at the mental hygiene clinic, which is now the Human Development Center. Put in a couple of years there and I was asked to join the Duluth Clinic. Duluth, it turns out, is uh, not too different from San Francisco because we, they have the Pacific Ocean. Uh, we have the Great Lake here. Uh, we've got seagulls or lake gulls, I guess you'd say, and San Francisco has gulls and big shipping in and out. But to me, the most striking thing was the foghorn. When I came to Duluth, the foghorn was the exact same horn that I had listened to all my young life in San Francisco. Well, a colleague of mine now at the Duluth Clinic thought it would be a good thing for uh, he and I to join 
the um, Pilgrim Congregational Church. So we did, and I had the kids all went to uh, Sunday school and all that business. I really enjoyed the music. I was in the choir, and uh, we had a really good musical program. And I became uh, chairman of the Board of Christian Education, if you will. And uh, it was one of my jobs was to hand out Bibles to the students who finished the confirmation. And this was at the main church meeting, you know, Sunday. And I told the congregation and the children that uh, we're giving you this Bible now, and you should know that uh, it has a great deal of, of uh, good parts, but it has some parts in that are horrid. And uh, that didn't sit well with some of the congregation, and there were complaints that I was blaspheming, <laughs> which I was. <laughs> I was at the Duluth Clinic, which is now Essentia, and um, in 1998, I think, the clinic merged with St. With, uh, Mary's Hospital across the street, which was a very good idea for several reasons. But it did meant that um, the medical staff had to sign their honor to respect and abide by the Catholic restrictions of medicine. And that really troubled me. I didn't like that at all. And I did sign it with the proviso underneath for consenting Catholics only. And uh, that, didn't, that didn't work. So they, they fired me from the hospital courtesy staff. As you walk up to uh, the ramp into uh, St. Mary's Hospital, you were greeted by this gal. That tickled me a lot, so I took a picture of it and added on the bottom there, she doesn't trust you. And then <laughs> I put, put it up and mounted it at the uh, St. Mary's Hospital. I attended uh, now uh, after retirement UMD, and I discovered that any senior citizen can take courses there for a very low fee. And I took uh, geology, and I took a Chaucer course, and some metalworking, jewelry making. Oh, that's how we learned to make my uh, belt buckle. At UMD, I noticed that the walls of the Halls of Ivy were strewn with religious posters. Join Newman Club, Catholic group. Come to the so-and-so evangelical church, the synagogue, all, all this stuff is all over the place. Also in the student uh, hall, there were offices of about three religions. Uh, now, they did pay for their space, but this kind of religiosity struck me as peculiar and wrong in a state uh, school, state university, which should be devoted to knowledge, you know, clear thinking, science, and so on. Well, I was annoyed with, these, with this situation, and so I uh, started my own poster war. This is the Egyptian sun god Ra, R-A. And so I started proselytizing for Ra. <laughs> now here's, here is one. Keep worshiping Ra. Ra will never put dung in your face if you don't suck up. It's told about in Malachi. The actual chapter from Malachi uh, reads, And now, you priests, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen, this is God talking, I will rebuke your offspring. Well, now, isn't that nice? He's going to take it out on the kids. <laughs> I, and I will spread dung on your faces. That's, that's Malachi. That's, that's harsh. Doesn't that just make you puke for a god to act like that? <laughs> Hell, Ra's mom would have washed his little god mouth out with hard soap if he talked that way. <laughs> Tell your friends, switch to Ra. He is nicer. <laughs> and, uh, I got this letter in the uh, student newspaper. It says, use some sense when drawing support. 
I was walking towards the dining center the other day and saw something that caught my eye. After I read it, I became increasingly angry. It was a simple piece of paper. The type said, the sign said, worship Ra. Here Ra explained why he canceled, why he canceled the end of the world planned by lesser gods. I try very hard to be open-minded to the views of others that may differ from my own, but this is a joke. I am all for freedom of religion, human rights, and speech, but please, if you really want people to support your cause, present the facts to them in an intelligent fashion. Let them decide what they want. Don't force it down their throats and claim something so simplistic as wearing shoes. <laughs> Tell God, even though God fails to answer prayer and is off duty most of the time, Ra forgives. And while he was in the mood, he forgave Muhammad and Jesus and even Holly Kay. That was the girl that wrote that uh, article. But don't forget to toast up an ox or a lamb now and then. For Ra appreciates the aroma and will send good weather and grades that you can be proud of. Sure, Ra improves your grades, but what have you done for Ra lately? <laughs> Copy this poster and spread the word about Ra for world peace. And sacrifice a cow or something. It costs a little for what you get. <laughs> LSF. I wanted to see if I could start a community group of folks uh, who had a place to go when they, in, when they had nothing to do on Sunday morning. And hopefully the group could be a community towards secular living. So the emphasis in this, the group that I wanted to start would be on friendship and would be free and open. So I spoke to some people in the Twin Cities, leaders of the uh, humanist and atheist down there, and they encouraged me to to do it, and they gave me a list of names in this area um, of people who were interested in uh, atheism, agnosticism, etc., but of course lived too far away from the Twin Cities to attend. And uh, that's the group that I started with. About 12 came to the uh, lower level of the uh, Holiday Inn for the first meeting. and. Uh, now we don't have any original members except for myself. We started having speakers, and uh, a gym teacher at East High had uh, formulated a Christian athletes club. And he was doing uh, uh, prayer meetings at the flagpole in, before school. And uh, I invited him to come and tell us why he did that, and he was a speaker, and uh, we told him why he shouldn't do that. <laughs> we picketed the Boy Scout headquarters for their exclusion of gay scouts and uh, atheists. We wrote letters and were influential in protesting the United Way funding of religious organizations such as the YMCA. Um, we had good press. In, uh, where is it? I think it, July uh, 2000, the, the Duluth newspaper uh, covered us with a very pretty nice story. We have uh, had uh, bus signs and highway signs, and we have a member who cleans up a, a portion of, of well, the road in Duluth. Uh, John Eggleston, uh, because uh, so many religious abuses are beyond our local scope, beyond the, the, what we can do here, uh, we joined the uh, Freedom From Religion Foundation. It is a wonderful organization. I think it costs about 40 bucks a year to be a member to this, you know, this paper. Um, really good conventions at Madison and uh, alternating every two years with another city, maybe San Francisco, but then back to Madison. And we've had the, the leaders of that 
who have spoken to us on a number of occasions. These are the leaders of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, uh, Annie Laurie Gaylor and Dan Barker. And here he is uh, at one of our meetings. One of our uh, members, uh, Dr. Robert Goldish, had a, a, a Jewish friend whose spouse died and she received a special Bible from the, uh, from the bank, Pioneer Bank. And she was not happy with that because she was Jewish. And so Bob and I and two others from our group, I think, went to the manager of the bank and told him it might be better for him if he weren't endorsing a specific religion because not all people are happy with that religion. And he did discontinue the practice. We held a forum uh, here in the Radis in the Big Room, mayoral candidates. And uh, there were about uh, six, I think, at the time, and all but one came and spoke to us. And we had a chance to uh, ask them how they felt about uh, churches, synagogues, etc., not paying their share of property taxes. When you get p uh, candidates that come to the door, this is your chance to tell them what you think is important as a free thinker. And I always talk to them about that item of that we are forced to pay the taxes for the churches. Anyway, for that uh, candidate talk, we had about 100, we had over 100 people in that big room. Another early speaker at LSF was a uh, professor at UMD who came to explain to us how it was impossible to be a moral person without a religion. And uh, he learned otherwise from us. <laughs> a number of us free thinkers were plaintiffs with the Minnesota Civil Liberties Union in uh, suing the city. The lawsuit was successful, but I got a letter, Bill, take away the courthouse stone, your life will be taken. If you think we are kidding, you are wrong. I want to point out that to one of our early members, who's dead now, Dale Hagen, was very prominent in this affair. We've had uh, three splinter groups. I don't know how many of you know that, but we used to, in the earlier days, we had two arch-fundamentalists. And uh, they loved our group because they liked the openness and the conviviality and all, which they said was better than at their churches. So they kept coming. <coughs> and every once in a while, Paul would raise up his hands and say, praise Jesus, right over there. <laughs> well, we tolerated them and they tolerated us. But one day, uh, Paul told me he was founding his own group, Christian, uh, Christian Free Thinkers. And he did. And he had uh, uh, rented a room here. And uh, I went to one of his meetings. He had uh, uh, three or four people sitting there with him glumly while he berated them. Uh, we've had two uh, more successful groups. Jim Lowe, I don't think he's here today, uh, had one going in Ashland for a while. And Ken Eck uh, did a successful one in Grand Rapids. Uh, we were prominent in blocking the city of Duluth from financing partially a Croc Center, a Salvation Army community center, which featured a prominent cross. They had a drawing of the, the building, and there was a big cross on the top of this building, and of course it was a Salvation Army. So they did, uh, uh, the city did not finance. Our uh, latest protest was not successful. I sent the following uh, letter to the editor, 
I recently learned that a vehicle crashed into a Ten Commandment monument at the public entrance of the Cloquet Fire and Police Departments, tipping it backwards. This gives the city an opportunity to find a suitable location for the monument. Religious displays on public property give the impression of civic endorsement towards certain religious preference and are unconstitutional. Certainly the fire and police departments of Cloquet are for all of Cloquet citizens. Okay, but still there, so we failed on that one. I want to talk a bit about, uh, about spreading uh, the word for Lake Spirit Freethinkers. Uh, it's important to um, have some of these cards with you. There are some on the table. Uh, people are always coming up to me uh, because of this, my card, which is out here. Uh, and, and they say, oh, what is that? Tell me about that. Or, oh, I hear. And so I get a chance to pass these things out. And people, if they come and be a member, that's swell. But if they just know about us, know that we are a group in the community that will uh, will take on religious abuses of church state, for example. And then we have pamphlets that we should just, it's simplest and cheapest form of advertising. Jim Little has made us some Lake Superior Freethinker buttons. With these things on my car, one day I'm going up to Central Entrance and a uh, warm day in Duluth and the windows are open and this guy in a motorcycle all dressed in black, you know, nasty black hat, sort of like that. No, he had a bandana. Anyway, <laughs> pulls up next to me. He looks over at the car and he says, you Dr. Van Druten? I said, yes. He said, well, I read all your letters to the editor and I agree with every one. <laughs> <laughs> so off he went. <laughs> Gave him the thumbs up. Shortly after I retired, I learned that uh, St. Luke's Hospital was going to merge with a Catholic organization, the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother in uh, Madison. And this would mean that both of the major hospitals in Duluth would be under Catholic rule. So I went to the chief administrator of the hospital, John Strange, and, and said, do you, you know, do you realize what this will do? And he said, well, Bill, it's a done deal. Too late. Well, I went to Tina Welch at the Women's Center, and we established, with the LSF and her people, we established a coalition in town, uh, along with uh, some Jewish groups and Methodists, that was able to block that merger. Uh, also, at that time, uh, the Essentia was going to absorb the Miller Dwan Hospital which was a city hospital for the poor. We turned the coalition on that too, and we were successful. And um, Miller Dwan can and does perform legal and necessary medical procedures. Okay, those are some of the highlights of the early days. But now, what about us now? In the early days, if for the first seven years I was the leader, and uh, if anything needed done, I did it. And once in a while, the member would say, well, Bill, we need to do this or this. And I would tell them, well, good, you can be captain of that project. But now we're a well-oiled machine. We've got 401c3. We've got Robert's Rules of Order going in the planning committee. And it's going along just fine. But my concern, are we growing too tame? I mean, we haven't found any religious problems to attack of late, and that can't be that there are none. So I'm hopeful that we will continue to be a watchdog in our community. And that, folks, is the history, early history of Bill and Lake Spirit Freethinkers. Thank you.